Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is Eric's engine we're looking at again. Uh, I fixed the crack in the number three exhaust valve bowl, uh, and I thought I I thought I had footage of it, but for some reason the camera did not go on when I thought it did, and uh, I missed out on showing you the stitching of it. Uh, it was much worse than I had thought. Uh, it took 12 pins to stitch that together. Uh, I've got the head back on. Uh, the gasket is sealed. Got the head on. It's torqued down. Uh, exhaust manifold is on. These bolts or studs go right into the water jacket. They need sealer on them as well. Uh, that's all taken care of. Uh, it is holding 10 pounds of air without any trouble. <clears throat> I'm not going to put any more air to it. Uh, uh, until I run a little bit, the um, uh, the sealer you put on the pins is heat activated, and that'll actually um, seal up better when heat gets to it. So I don't want to blow that sealer out of there. So um, this is ready to put the accessories on. Um, carburetor, they've got an alternator for this. The fan, uh, get it in the test stand, <clears throat> and we can run it soon. Uh, we'll put some antifreeze in there. Uh, it's already been started in pressure loop. We'll put a new filter. We'll put some oil. Uh, we'll fire this guy up and uh, I'll show you how that goes when it happens. Okay guys, the only picture I have of the stitching, uh, I took a picture on my phone um, and you can see all around this part up here, this is the, this is the seat, the valve seat. Uh, it's a factory hardened seat. Below that is where the crack was. And you see all that shiny new metal. Those are pins. I started about here. I walked 12 pins around there. Um, and then peened them in. So what you're looking at are the peened pins. Um... And like I said, uh, this held 30 pounds. Uh, this crack did not appear until after uh, it was started. Um, I, I don't really, I don't know why that happened, but it did. And, uh, that, you know, we got it fixed up now. <clears throat> so, we're over here at, at Hal's engine again. It's hard to describe what a disaster it is in there, but there's so much sludge and junk in there. Um, then you can see the valves aren't even hitting the tap. It's there. Uh, we've got some valve train issues here, and the amount of sludge in this engine is incredible. Uh, let's take a look just at the valve cover. Let's walk over here again. Look at the crust on that valve cover. So, um, I don't think it was a well cared for engine, um, and, and it's in tough shape. And like I say, we'll just continue to not take this apart like an animal and damage it and crack the block or break something or screw something up. So, we're just going at this a little bit at a time, and, and it seems like it's taking a long time, but it'll, it'll pay off uh, in the end if we don't have to fix a lot of boo boos that we make by just you know going at it real hard so uh, soaking the valves uh, and trying tapping them with a hammer trying to get those to move easily so that I don't have to drive them out um, but we're making progress and I'll take you along um, the whole way okay here's Joey's engine in the honing machine and we made uh, we made all our passes in the cylinders there with the rough set of stones uh, and we've got them right around a thousandth, thousand, thousand and a half away from uh, finished diameter and I'll switch over to the, the, the finer stones next and uh, we'll take these right to size got the silver lights here 60 over ready to go uh, we will hand fit the pistons. Uh, you know, even when, even when you get a box of 
precision pistons like this um, I still hand fit them and uh, and you'll see the difference um, uh, when I do it uh, if I get some footage of that I'll show you what I mean but um, <clears throat> we're shooting for a bore of three inches 185 and silver lights like you to have um, uh, one thousandths let's see uh, thousands and a half of clearance um, so we'll try and hit that number three inch 185 exactly see how the pistons fit uh, just before we get to that we'll go you know we'll start testing pistons and we'll see if we got to go just a hair under or hair over um, you just don't know until you start fitting the pistons so uh, when I get the stones switched over uh, I'll show you a little bit of the uh, the honing okay guys it's been busy in the shop I do get a lot of random things that show up that's a cast iron urn from a local antique dealer that I had to fix <clears throat> and uh, just came in the other day I don't know how many guys are interested in uh, big rigs but uh, got this floor in from a Peterbilt 379 that I gotta fabricate uh, it's aluminum and this particular guy before he found me uh, couldn't find anybody anywhere that could put these uh, big huge beads in there so eventually he wound up here I'm waiting on a sheet of aluminum and if there's any interest in seeing that being made um, I can show you how we go about doing that so that's coming up uh, no time for that today but um, I'll take you outside it's another hot and humid day and uh, I got a tractor that I gotta uh, get done for a local farmer type person and uh, so they can cut their fields and uh, we'll head out there and I'll show you what's going on with that Okay guys, this is an old Kubota 295 tractor and it needed a new starter. So I got the starter in there, I'm charging a battery up for it, cables I gotta make new. Um, the mice are terrible and they get in there and they eat the wires. So I haven't gotten this to start yet uh, on the starter button, which is right there. Uh, it's a good running tractor. It's got a little brush hog on there. Uh, he takes care of some horse fields with this and stuff. And uh, that kind of brings me to my next thing here. I tried probably for three months to get this thing moved. It's only about 20 minutes from my shop. And doesn't seem like anybody wants to do anything anymore. I tried guys with trucks and trailers and couldn't get it moved. Um, called a couple towing companies, could not get it moved. Nobody wanted to pick it up. Um, so I finally, on the 4th of July, um, called a local tow company. And they were slow because it was the 4th of July. And uh, I didn't want to be out here on the 4th of July, but uh, they... They said they had a guy that drives the truck just sitting around and they'd be happy to go get it. It's just pure luck that I got this picked up and brought over here. So I'm reaching out to anybody who is interested. Anybody who has a truck and trailer, wants to make a little bit of extra money, anybody starting a towing business, a hot shot truck, or anybody wants to move stuff around for me. Um, things like this little jobs um, picking up sand blasting sand um, picking up vehicles from various states uh, that need work if there's anybody out there interested and can actually do what they say and uh, would be interested in making a little extra money uh, I've got things to be picked up in various states right now I've got a lot of local things that need to be moved around anybody a young kid wants to get going with a truck and trailer or a older guy just needs something to do anybody uh, I just don't have the time to uh, to go out and actually 
pick up the stuff and do the work and then deliver it it's just it's, it's getting to be too much um, so if anybody's interested in doing that kind of stuff and I don't care where you are uh, if you're interested in moving stuff got to move some stuff out of Virginia uh, I've got some stuff coming in from Rhode Island um, so just putting it out there if anybody is local or not local but does move around the country and haul things around contact me put a comment below I'll be happy to talk with you okay guys here we are back on the J20 and I know it I still don't have my transmission I know I told you guys about monster transmission and the bad time I'm having with them um, on May 7th, uh, I called those guys up and because I needed a transmission. This one was slipping so bad you couldn't couldn't get out of your own way with this one. I called them up. I was just looking for a transmission. I looked everywhere for a transmission. Couldn't find a good one. These guys said they had one in stock. Um, and I asked them. I'm like, are you sure? It's a Jeep pickup. It's very odd 727. Do you have it? Oh, yeah, we have it. So... They billed me and said it would be here in 12 days, and it wasn't. And then they called back and said, hey, we can't find that transmission, um, but we can rebuild yours. So uh, not being able to find anybody locally, I shipped it down to Monster. And it's all very good at the beginning. You know, oh, we got a customer care, and we're going to show you and talk to you every step of the way. So the original buying a transmission from them was close to three thousand uh, dollars they could rebuild it for fifteen hundred dollars so I think you know where I'm going I paid for the transmission that they were supposed to ship and then they couldn't ship it so they owe me a credit which they won't give me back um, so I haven't heard from them in a long time I finally got a hold of my original salesman. He said he was going to help me out. And accounting and uh, customer care people, nobody will talk to me. Nobody will give me the money back. Uh, so I had to open up a case with my bank yesterday to try and get the money they owe me. Uh, so right now I'm out all the money and my original transmission that they say they shipped but we can't find it anywhere being tracked I can't track it anywhere I don't know where my transmission is uh, monster transmission is no help at all uh, they're very good they look great they got a great website they'll talk to you and tell you promise you the world anybody thinking of monster transmission do not go within a hundred miles of those people they are absolutely just money grubbing thieves um, I can't say enough bad about them. Um, they they won't even they won't even answer my calls anymore. So I don't know what's going on, but um, I'm waiting on the transmission, and I still got to put the brake stuff on. I have everything for it. Um, everything is sitting inside there. Um, I just kind of lost my motivation on this. Uh, so this is sitting right now until I get the transmission. So in the meantime, um, this was going to be my driver. In the meantime, I went out and I bought a, um, a military pickup truck, a CUCV, um, uh, ju just to get me by. Uh, that should be here any day now. Um, but I just need something. Uh, it's a heavy truck, so I will. Uh, I'll get a little trailer for it, and and uh, and be able to pick up some local stuff by myself. I won't need to call anybody anymore. Um, so when the military pickup gets here, I will show you that. And uh, I don't know if I'll build a little trailer, or maybe I'll just go buy a trailer. I'll probably just go buy a trailer for it because I don't have much time to build a trailer. But. Um, I, I'm going to try and pick up the slack by myself for now. Uh, but like I say, if anybody, anybody at all, 
uh, is interested in doing any trucking and trailering and stuff like that, just let me know. Okay, we're, we're in the engine shop here now. I had to move the snowblower Jeep out here to get machines out. Um, and I don't really want it out here because it's kind of humid and stuff. I don't want the moisture setting in. Um, but I just got that on go jacks right now. I got to cover it up. And um, I want to get that back in the shop as quickly as I can. Let's see how our little birds are doing. Oh yeah, those guys are monsters. I think they'll be flying any day now. Yeah, I could hear the mother. She's getting all upset. You hear her? Yeah, she don't like me looking at the babies. Okay, but they're about ready to go. Then we can start closing in. Yeah, there's the mom there. Yeah, she gets all angry when I come in and look at her babies. There she is. Okay, enough of that. Um, waiting to do a little bit more work on uh, the, the 816 there. Once I get the uh, um, air pack, and uh, I've been talking with, with somebody on YouTube, and, and we're going to get together and do some work for him. He's going to help me out with the air pack. He said he got a new old stock one. And uh, I'll show you how we go through and get those brakes working. And... I think today is the 7th, and uh, hopefully in a couple days I'll have that military pickup here, and I'll show you how that goes, and uh, try and get that registered right away, and, uh, and get hooked up and start moving things around. Okay guys, we got Joe and Ted on the mill, and we're taking a light 1,000 pads across it. We got a real hollow in the middle here. Uh, we're gonna get this nice and flat. And uh, we're just gonna take real light cuts here to take off the minimum. And uh, we're just gonna slowly let it go across there. We're at 490 RPM, uh, one and three four weeks a minute. And that gives a real nice finish. So we can let this do its thing. And we'll come back, take a look at it, and see what it's like. Okay guys, there's our first 1,000th pass. We were cutting all the way across for a little bit on this side. Uh, and we started losing it here. And right in here where it's very dark, you see that's where we got our biggest belly. Uh, and then started cutting okay. And then we really lost it down here. So, we'll probably take another two off that now. I'll probably come up 2,000s, give it 2,000s cut and see where that gets us um, but not too bad uh, Joey's got that relieved block that you saw me do so we lowered the compression there uh, if we have to take off five or six or eight to ten thousandths here uh, and we raise the compression it won't be terrible because we lowered the compression by relieving the block uh, we'll bring it right back to stock or higher compression uh, by milling the head so Whatever I got to do to get this one right, we'll do it so we got two nice, perfectly flat surfaces. Um, <clears throat> that way you don't have any head gasket leaks or anything like that. But uh, we'll make another pass, take another 2000s, and see where we wind up. Okay, guys, there's the finished cylinder head. It's perfectly flat now. And we've got just a perfect finish on there. I've got one YouTube viewer that gives me trouble every time I mill a head. Says it comes out too rough and won't work and the head gaskets are going to fly out of there. Um, <clears throat> but he never shows me any of his work. And on the older engines you want the head a little rougher than the new ones. Um, there's a tool that you drag across here to get the RA. That's roughness average. Um, and it's a profileometer and you just kind of it's a stylus and you just drag it across there and you could you could tell what kind of finish you got um, 
this is an absolute perfect finish and uh, it'll work with any type of gasket so Joey's head is finished and while I have the setup here I'm going to take uh, Hal's head apart and um, throw that on the mill and get that done next but um, <clears throat> I'll get on that tomorrow uh, I just got word that uh, my military pickup is coming in Thursday or Friday um, I gotta confirm which day is, is gonna happen so I've got to do some things um, get ready for that guy coming in and um, get a few more things done on some other projects right now but Joey's project is coming along real good uh, the head is done the block is just about finished like I say we just gotta run the second set of stones through there and then wash the block and uh, we will be on to assembly in no time with Joey's engine and uh, we'll start getting Hal's engine apart uh, as time allows so we're gonna end this one here today uh, thanks for watching everybody I will catch you on the next one